Farina and David Mitchell in the starting 11 against Israel. The pain and agony of that fateful day has not been forgotten. As much as I hate thinking about that day because it's probably the lowest point in my career, it's, uh, it's an experience that, as you say, you'll never forget. But uh, also it's a thing that uh, motivates me more to make, make sure it doesn't happen again. I've gone around to the players individually and, and, and spoken to them about that feeling. And uh, I just hope they're hungry as I am for this game on Sunday. In the past four World Cup campaigns, Australia has needed to win crucial final leg matches on home soil. In the 1982 campaign, the Socceroos went down to New Zealand in Sydney. In 1985, a big win against Scotland in Melbourne would have seen them qualify for the Mexico finals, but they drew nil all. And you won't get much closer than that without scoring. Well, I think the advantage the other team had in, uh, in 85 is that we were together for a hell of a long time. It was about four or five months. But, I mean, if this team had the same preparation, I think it'd be the best team Australia's probably ever assembled. Four years later, it was back to Sydney. A packed house, an eventful game, but the 1-1 draw wasn't enough. The Socceroos had failed again. Back then, current coach Eddie Thompson was an interested spectator, having cut his ties with Frank Arrock after the Seoul Olympics. That's the first time I've probably cried after a soccer game when we got beat with Israel. Uh, probably the most emotional I've been. When you're involved, you don't get so emotional, but when I can see it, how much it would do for the game here, there's a lot of pressure on everybody to do well at the weekend. Yeah, well, I just hope the outcome is better this time than it was the last, last time against Israel. Um, you know, the, all the players we've got overseas now, um, and all the home-based players, we've come together now. It's been great preparation, really. And just hopefully we can get the right result you know, against Canada at home here, and hope we get a big crowd. Yes, that report by Andy Pascalidis, and at this point I am welcoming some viewers, or our viewers, in Sydney, who by some measure of surprise are getting this match live. After all, we just received a few minutes ago permission from the Australian Soccer Federation to do so, and I might also welcome viewers in North and New South Wales who are watching us through courtesy of NBN3 in Newcastle. Well, with me is another of our guest uh, expert panellists, Robbie Wheatley. Robbie, uh, we talked with Johnny about uh, uh, how this match uh, might just pan out. 89, you were here as well. The circumstances are a little bit different. Uh, how do you see it? Well, Les, in 89, we were hoping that this would be a springboard to further honours for uh, the Australian team. It ended up being a graveyard for Australia, and I'm hoping, like the rest of the supporters, that we can turn it around today. I look at a team that's been reshuffled. The Australian side has had two major changes. Ivanovic comes into midfield. Uh, sorry, he comes in as sweeper. I like that move. Zelic has then moved up into midfield. So a couple of important moves there. And at front, Farina is paired with Arnold. So our, our strongest side, I think, today, Les. The Canadians, well, the 14 games they've had together, I think that's their uh, strongest point. They're a very good unit. They look confident. They look relaxed. And I think they'll be a tough opposition for the Australians this afternoon. Yeah, how did you size them up as, as opponents uh, in that first game two weeks ago? Well, I think they were a bit nervous to start off with, even at home. And uh, only into the second half, when they started to get the territorial advantage, did they really start to dominate the game. But I like Bunbury. We must admit that he is the strongest player for the Canadians, and he'll be a thorn in the side of the Australians' defence. The rest of the side, experienced, well-controlled, good goalkeeper, good stable side. The Canadians are relaxed here today. They're in the box seat. Uh, OK, well, I think we're just about ready to go with the uh, national anthems, Robbie. So let's uh, go to the national anthems now. And then our commentators are Andy Pascalidis and Johnny Warren.
Welcome to viewers right around Australia from the Sydney Football Stadium. The moment of truth for Australian soccer. The Socceroos up against Canada, out to avenge the defeat in the first leg at Edmonton, where they went down by two goals to one. King Zelic, to many of us here in Australia, he'll be playing a new role today. They have a new look defence for today's crucial World Cup tie. Goalkeeper Mark Schwarzer is in for suspended Robert Zabika, while Adelaide City pair Milan Ivanovic and Tony Vidmar come into the defence. Zelic moves to the midfield for the injured Paul Ocon, while Vidmar replaces Milan Vlagojevic. Canada has made one alteration for this game, their 14th World Cup qualifier this year. Missing from the Canadian lineup is John Lignatis. The, the number four, Nick Dasovic, moves into his position at left midfield, while Fortuna Siddhar defender Randy Samuel is back from suspension. Samuel will mark Socceroo captain Graham Arnold. Not a full house as we would have liked here at the Sydney Football Stadium, but nonetheless, the moment of truth for the Socceroos. The captains Miller and Arnold out in the middle there with the Japanese referee, Mr. Obata, the second youngest FIFA referee from Japan. Graham Arnold captains the side for the third time in succession. Paul Wade again on the bench. There's been a lot said in the build-up during the week. Pay disputes, some dissension in the camp. But the bottom line here for Mark Schwartz and the rest of the side, they have to win here by at least 1-0 or 2-0. 2-1 will force it into extra time. The away goal could play a big role and Bunbury, he'll have a lot to say about today's outcome. He caused Australia a great deal of bother in the first leg. He missed the opening match for West Ham last night. Desperate to score a couple of goals to remind Billy Bonds about his pedigree. And for Bob Lenarduzzi, he's been through this before. 52 caps for Canada. A young coach really at 37. But a most accomplished one. The Socceroos sporting their new strip from Adidas. As the chant goes up here at the Sydney Football Stadium. All in readiness for Australian soccer's biggest game in the last four years. It was here where Israel ended the hopes and dreams of a nation. With that match ending in a 1-1 draw, Australia needed to win as they do today to march on. The winner over two legs will go on to play a third place side from Peru. Paraguay, Colombia or Argentina. Paraguay is currently third in that group in South America. As Jurakovic gives the ball to Milan Ivanovic back in the side. His last starting international was against the Solomon Islands. And already some confusion at the back. Farina, he'll keep it in and he couldn't get it to Arnold. And away there by Samuel. A good sign for Australia early on. Zelic, Van Blurk. The elegant skills of the Borussia Dortmund sweeper Zelic. Tony Vidmar. Tobin. Tough one for Slater. In there was Sweeney. Bunbury on and out of play. Tony Vidmar. The last time he played uh, in the same international side with his brother was against Argentina last year and Robbie Slater gets his cross in too close keeper just made sure of it Clay Forrest six foot five Canadian keeper the tallest player on the pitch a long ball over the top of Tobin Bunbury waits for support and there was Tobin And commitment there coming from Ned Zelic, but now Hooper, good jink inside, commitment also from Ivanovic. Zelic, cool play. Slater, Arnold on his right, 
through the middle, Van Blurk. Van Blurk with a bigger goal! Oh, what a save! What a save from Forrest! Australia, one minute and 50 seconds into the game. It was almost 1-0, a replica of what we saw against New Zealand. An excellent start, Andy. The boys have taken it right to Canada, and the fact that Van Blurk involved in the attacks uh, indicates that a very positive attitude from Australia, but a splendid start by them. And now the header! Vidmar and Farina came through. Frank Farina out to prove a, a few points to some critics who were disappointed with his form last week. That's all Australia. Early days yet, but what a change it makes to come back home to your own backyard. No smiles yet. The house is looking fairly safe for Eddie Thompson. Zelic already involved in a couple of strong physical challenges. Slater chasing down Sweeney. Interception by Tony Vidmar. Ivanovic. Arnold trying to get it on for Slater. Samuel there. And that'll be a good duel as well, John. The Samuel Arnold duel. They've played against each other four times in Holland when Arnold was there with Rhoda. Well, it's important Arnie, as the skipper and as the key player, has a big game here by his own admission. It was a quiet one for him and many others in Edmonton. But a good start, Andy. We've already had two strikes on goal. And the, uh, the hunger's there, the tackling. And the fact that uh, everyone is just so uh, positive in an, in an attacking sense. They've let Canada know that uh, they are playing away from home, established the authority, and it's important now to consolidate on what's been a good opening three minutes for them. A long ball for Farina. Easily cut out by Watson. Van Blurk there. Vidmar looks on. Farina's on side. Arnold's in the centre. Farina, he might have it himself. He lines it up inside. through the centre. What a dynamic start from the Socceroos. Well, in Edmonton, Andy, we didn't have a strike on goal. We've already had three in the opening three minutes. The fact that uh, Farina is, is uh, very active at this stage is a good sign. It was a quiet game for him up in Canada, but he's out to prove that uh, he is uh, our leading striker. And his combination with Arnold up front already, their mobility is causing a lot of problems in the Canadian defence. Dasovic on for Bunbury, inside for Hooper. On the right is Mitchell. Ivanovic away for Australia. Arnold and Samuel, up with Samuel. Now Vidmar. Vidmar's got Farina ahead of him, blocked. Watson the culprit there. And that should be a yellow, That's Andy. a yellow card, really, surely it is. He was on his way to goal. It's a professional foul, and uh, we go back to Edmonton, where the beaker was sent off. Uh, but this is a professional foul. No intent to play the ball, just to, to deny Vidmar a goal-scoring opportunity, and uh, should be a yellow card. Good start by Australia. They've got Canada on the back foot. It's easy to say, let's get a good uh, opening to the match, and it's not always so easy. But Canada already on the back foot. And so many involved in attack, not just uh, Farina and Arnold, we've seen Van Blurk, we've seen Vidmar is quite busy, Slater. up. But it's important to consolidate and uh, hopefully get that all-important first goal. And you just wonder if Australia can get that first goal early, how many more might come after that? Zelic with a free kick. Looking for Arnold, Samuel's there with him, away by Samuel. Surprisingly, no midfielders there waiting at the edge of the box. And a handball against Slater. And Robbie Slater, I should point out, was in a bit of doubt for this game. He had a hamstring injury. But Slater was checked earlier this morning and was given the OK. Arnold and Samuel. It looked like Samuel was hanging on to Arnold. Nobilio back. Great turn by Bunbury. The advantage rule. In comes Mitchell. The chance. And Schwartz have got down. Well, Canada could have hit Australia there. 
It was Bunbury who played the role of uh, creator. And Australia, perhaps, lucky not to concede one. Of it's what they've got to be careful of, Andy. And all, it, all it takes is that to upset the game plan. The good refereeing allowed the advantage for the foul on Bunbury. And a tremendous save from young Schwarzer. Tony Vidmar, his first game at right back. At all major levels of international football. Gallop away. Bunbury up. In was Van Blurk. Oh, the flag from Mr Yamaguchi. Just maybe a little bit late on that far side. Australia's eighth World Cup qualifier in this campaign and for Canada. They've had 14 qualifiers this year. Remembering, of course, that Canada needed to win their last game against Mexico to go straight to the USA 94 finals, but Mexico ended up winning away from home 2-1. Canada had led 1-0. Hooper. Away by Miller. Sweeney down that left flank and free kick has been won by Tobin. Arnold and Samuel. Sweeney across in cover for Canada. There was Tobin. Now Vidmar inside for Slater. Oh, what a challenge. That's surely got to be a yellow. And Sweeney giving Slater a few words as well. There's no need for that, really. That was some bad challenge from Sweeney. The Canadians involved in a war of words, which is foolish in this sort of game. But, you know, Sweeney is having a bit to say to Slater, and there's no doubts about the foul. Well, it was either yellow, uh, did appear double-footed even, Andy, very late above the ball. If we weren't Australians, we could argue it should have uh, perhaps even been a centre-off offence. Very, very poor tackle. Well, the referee hasn't pulled out the cards as yet. There have been two challenges. It looked a bit like a yellow card offence. Ivanovic, Farina away, Arnold and Samuel. Away by Samuel. Slater across. And the ball cleared away by Miller. Have a look at this. Have a look. Ten minutes into the game. No goals. There could have been two for Australia at least and perhaps one for Canada. The fans are certainly getting value for money. Farina. Slater. Looking for Arnold. Samuel there for Canada. The keeper comes. So does Farina. And big Craig Forrest. Quickly away from his goal area. And Luke hitting behind the clearance. Dracovic back there. Van Blurk. Vidmar. Dracovic. Good searching ball for Van Blurk. The keeper's come out of his area. For the second time the keeper has made runs when he should have stayed in that goal mouth. He's just mistimed his runs, the keeper, and Frank Gallup will be happy that they've only conceded the throw in. Van Blurk. Farina. And away by Samuel, the corner. Second corner of the game, both of them to Australia. Yeah. Slater goes near post. Zelic. Vidmar. Direction not there. Always hard with your back to goal. 
We know what sort of uh, shot Tony Vigmar has. A lot of money invested in this team, John, and uh, to be quite honest, they have to really uh, get past Canada to prove exactly how good this team is. You've played in a few soccer sides yourself, and they call this team the dream team and perhaps the best team to represent Australia. Well, I think potentially it is. I don't think there's any argument with that. They, they still yet have to do it. But the investment uh, angle or people regard as an expense, it's not really. It's an investment to make the World Cup finals. The rewards, not just monetary, but uh, promotion-wise for the game here, should they make it, are quite immense. And that's the way it is worldwide, Andy. A lot of money required, a lot of preparation time, a lot of travel. And the ASF, to their credit, have given this team every opportunity to succeed. How did you find the uh, pay dispute uh, saga? Badly timed? Well, bad the way it, it came out publicly. Uh, players are entitled to market price the same as everybody else in this stadium is. Or uh, airlines or hotels or whatever. It's just sad that it came out publicly. That those matters should be decided uh, privately. Should also be decided before the whole World Cup campaign starts. But it was sad that it came out that way. But players are entitled to be compensated for their skill. Everybody else is and uh, they're no different. Good start for Australia. Tobin away. Zelic with the overhead looking for Slater. Slater will get there because Arnold was being tagged by Samuel. If Arnold can get Slater away, he's off. Slater. Slater should have the pace for Samuel. Well, the linesman didn't signal at all. The referee was at least 40 metres away from the action. And it's an Australian throw. Farina. Dasovic gets it back for Sweeney. Vidmar keeping it in. That's a class play from Tony Vidmar. Dasovic fouling Tony Vidmar. Interesting story there. Nick Dasovic had trialled there with Dinamo Zagreb and uh, had played with Zelko Adzic, who was a former player of the year and a former Socceroo. Later free kick. Farina, a little nod on there. Vidmar. Well, Aurelio rather back for Zelic. Van Blurk. Good idea, just pull out the defenders. Farina. Farina. Still gets his cross in. And again, the corner. What a game for Frank Farina. And, and great to see Andy. Frankie, the, the last few times for Australia has been a little bit low. He's the first to admit that. But really buzzing today. He's got a point to prove. He's uh, very mobile. I think it, it, it sort of suits him uh, so much better having more support from Arnold up there. They're causing all sorts of problems for the Canadian defence. When he operates solo about up front, it's much easier for him to be picked up. Zelic. Zelic slipped and Ivanovic has to chase back there. Ivanovic has found Slater. They head it through for Vidmar. And there was the defending from Hooper. Lovely ball from Ivanovic. The touch from Slater was perfect. And a great run through the middle from Aurelio Vidmar. Quarter number four for Australia. The match just over 15 minutes old. This time the long one. Tony Vidmar up there. Away by Sweeney. Ivanovic the last line. Well, not enough players dropping back, so smart move by Milan Ivanovic to leave it for Tony Vidmar. Australia are uh, clearly the superior team in this one, but they've got to turn that superiority into goals. Zelic. Vidmar. The touch for Van Blur. Mitchell's chasing him. It's gone inside. Not enough on it really to get to Farina. And that came off Tobin. 
But Australia, when they get down the flanks, John, they're opening up this Canadian defence every time almost. And the contribution from Vidmar and, uh, and Van Blerk on this side. I'm sure uh, Eddie Thompson would be happy with what's happening. They're just opening Canada up so much. But as you say, Andy, it's a matter of converting the superiority. It's all Australia at this stage. Jason Van Bloor. He knows how to score goals as well. He's actually scored two in his uh, first game for Australia against Indonesia B. Three years ago. Dale Mitchell for Bunbury. Van Bloerk on for Vidmar. How quickly can Australia break from the back now? Ivanovic is taking off. Down the line for Farina. Watson with Farina. Good clean challenge from the man who scored last, not last week, a fortnight ago in Edmonton. Zelic. Van Bloerk, Australia throw in. Most of the game has been in this half. Both teams have made it to the World Cup once. In 86, Canada was there. In 74, Australia made it. And everyone hesitating. Arnold. Maybe the layoff. But when you're near that goal area, you try to set yourself up for the opportunity. It was a bit uh, lazy, the defensive work from Canada. Clearing that ball. They go for Arnold again. Came off Samuel Dasovic. Looking for Mobilio. Hardly seen him in the game today. Dasovic has kept that run down that left flank. Bumbery inside for Dasovic. Looked like a handball. The referee wave play on. Up was Arnold with a delightful header. Vidmar. He was looking for Slater because Slater was free on the far right. That's, that's smart play. Yes, it is because... There wasn't really enough support coming through because you can see the consequence. Van Blurk's taken off. It needs to be a good one. And off the post. Farina. Farina shoots. Oh. The goal should have been there for Australia. Vidmar crashes the header against the post. And it fell invitingly for Farina. The best move of the game for Australia, Van Blerk overlapping so well. Splendid cross, Vidmar hits it well, unfortunately strikes the post. But it's the fifth opportunity for Australia. It's all their game, they've just got to keep their cool. Just keep their cool, keep doing more of the same because they've really got Canada against the ropes. Yeah, Robbie not to panic, those chances are going to be converted shortly. Robbie Slater was saying that not to panic, exactly. First 15 or 20, don't panic if we don't score a goal. He's telling all the uh, players in camp. That's been the general consensus of opinion this week. But the way Australia are playing, John, that's you know, strong possibilities of perhaps two or three going in today. They've got to get the first one. They just might do it here, perhaps. Slater. Slater should have released a bit earlier. It was a smart challenge from Sweeney. Bunbury. Ivanovic. Clipping the heels of Alex Bunbury. Bunbury. Now the shot from Mitchell. The 35-year-old midfielder. Scored a few goals in his time. 19, in fact, from uh, 
the junior levels right through the senior teams. Always a tough ask for Graham Arnold. Mitchell. Bunbury. And again another free kick. Canada is a bit unlike Australia where we have a 14-team National League. Canada has formed with the uh, United States a 17 competition. Of which the Vancouver 86 is a leading team coached by Bob Lenarduzzi. Nabilia. That's been an interesting duel as well. Mobilio and Jurakovic. You just thought perhaps Jurakovic might have been the man to pick up on Bunbury. Well, on the basis, Bunbury was the gun for uh, Canada in the away, away leg, and Jurakovic such a, a good marker. But uh, Eddie Thompson, believing that it was better, best to retain that, uh, that marking system, perhaps uh, Tobin in the air, probably better equipped to handle Bunbury than, say, Jurakovic. Surely there was a foul there on Zelic. Referee again, eager to keep the game going. Here's Zelic now. Good touch on for Vidmar. Farina on his left. Looking inside, that's... Well, initially it looked pretty good. But just curling away from Slater and then his brother Tony Vidmar. Way through the first half, no goals at the Sydney Football Stadium. But plenty of action, particularly at the Canadian end. As Watson brings down Farina, and that's the second second foul by Watson in almost identical position to the first. And the dual strikers, Farina and Arnold, that's been a good ploy as well today. Arnold or Zelic, or perhaps Robbie Slater. Dangerous position. About 25 metres out. Arnold's drive! Did it take a touch? No. But a well taken free kick from the captain. See here on the replay if it did in fact take a touch. No, it didn't. Van Bloek, one of the real performers today for Australia. Turns defence into attack, maybe. You know, and it's header inside, covered there by Yellow. But that shows you the uh, nerves at the back. The Canadian defence wasn't really tested that much in the first leg, but today they've been exposed a few times. Mitchell. It looks dangerous, but it went over the head of Mobilio. In was Zelic. Tobin's clearance didn't come off. Zelic again. Ooh, that was late. That player should be booked for that. The captain should be booked. The referee's allowed play to continue, but when the ball goes out, I think the captain should be booked. Farina now for Australia. Blocked by first. Oh, Vidmar. Where was the shot? Tony Vidmar back. Zelic might make amends. He shoots and taken by Forrest. The chance, really, for Vidmar to make up for that. Early header where he struck the woodwork. It fell invitingly for Vidmar and maybe it was... Uh, wrong foot. Yes. He fell on his wrong foot. 
I agree with you on the foul, Andy, on Zelich oh, earlier on. I mean, referees should come back and book players for that. It was late. Canada, I feel, uh, have been able to get away with too many fouls. And there's no yellows yet. And uh, while there's no yellows, they'll continue to, to foul the likes of Zelich and Farina. They've, I'm surprised that uh, they've really gone for the physical style of game against a side that is so fluent on the ball. And even then, some of the challenges are a bit late. The referee has not booked a player yet. There's been three instances where you would have expected it. Arnold, that's a good switch. Vidmar, Slater will pull across. Yes. Swatting it through for Slater. Samuel's come across the hole. The experience, Samuel is at best holding the fence together. He's pulled off some important clearances and has won a few balls in the air. Arnold on. And again, a miscue, the shooting a bit astray, and Djurakovic's clearance has fallen favourably there from Abilio. He's only player up there, but there's men coming through for Canada. This is dangerous. Zelic away. Ivanovic will keep the cool at the back, and Vidmar will take off now. Defence changes. The attack begins. Vidmar looks for Arnold. Samuel there. Hooper on. Mobilio, the captain Miller, Yallop, it's a great pass, Mitchell, down the line there is Mobilio, and Blurk looks for Arnold. It's a good header on and Farina, Farina pushed by Samuel. Well, we've given the referee four chances, John, and he's having an absolute nightmare. Well, from our point of view, he is, but there's been so many... There's so no many. No, I'm not being biased, I'm being realistic. Well, they have, not Four. Canada four has been able to get away with it with the petty fouls, and there was another one on Farina, a very blatant one. And until they get the yellow, which puts them on the, the possibility of getting a red, they're just going to continue with it. You know what will happen. Australia, Australia will, will a retaliate. And they'll, and they'll get a yellow. Well, it's important that they don't retaliate because if they do, they're, they're sure to get the yellow. The players would be feeling a little bit, uh, just a little bit down at this stage. They, they shouldn't, though. They've done exactly what's required. They've opened Canada on the sides, particularly on the left with Van Blurk and uh, Aurelio Vidmar. Tony Vidmar Slater on the right. And that's the way to play them. Just keep the cool. We've had six or seven chances. It hasn't gone in. Not time by any means uh, to start the panic yet, but just uh, to, to get the head up. This is always a dangerous time, just running in towards half time. Keep the concentration at the back and keep playing exactly the way, the same way they are at this stage. Yallop's free kick. It's open up there, but it's fallen again for Mitchell. Away by Ivanovic Hooper. They get past Van Blurk. The poise and the class at the back by Ivanovic. Arnold. Arnold will get there. The captain laying it across for Tony Vidmar. Zelic. The deep ball for Arnold. Away by Watson. Hooper chasing Vidmar, he'll jockey it out. Well, it's about four or five, four or five fouls too late. This is rather petty from the referee to push the ball right back. Because the foul would have been at least two or three metres in. Maybe the referee's a bit tired, wants to have a breather. But the game has been pretty fast. Van Blurk, free kick. 
right over the top of Tobin as well. Nobilio. Aiming for Bunbury. Bunbury got in there ahead of Ivanovic. And look at this. Mitchell was coming through on the right, but Ivanovic has put it up to Farina. The keeper's off his line. Farina, the keeper blocks. Fitmar's there for Australia. Now Arnold. And Hooper away. What can one say? Fidmar, the ball inside. Oh! That's a great ball inside by Vidmar. Farina with a goalkeeper to beat. But as you said earlier, John, important for them not to lose their cool here. Well, it's a big miss by Frankie, but great work from Aurelio Vidmar. They're opening them up so easily. And it uh, goes without saying, they just need to put this all-important first one away. Some eight, eight or nine opportunities uh, Australia's had in this first half. Getting at the stage, Andy, where you just really have to put one away. Eight attempts on the Canadian goal, all of them. Close to, to resulting in uh, a goal. All good chances. Farina. That's a great ball inside, and Arnold was waiting for it. Hooper got the header away. That's a good sign from Farina. I mean, you miss a couple of chances, uh, the tendency is to start to, to hide, but Frank throwing himself around. That was excellent work. Just bad luck it didn't reach Arnie. But it's a good sign that a player, even though he misses the opportunity, is not going to start hiding. Well done, Farina. Slater's corner. Forrest really should have come for it. Van Blurk does. Came off Yallop. Babilio and Vidmar. Tony Vidmar this time. Well, he had to give a free kick there. Tony Vidmar was challenged by Mobilio. They're giving away a lot of free kicks, Canada now. Just about, about 10 minutes left. And off Arnold. Some of the reserves there from the left, Paul Wade, Jason Pollack, David Mitchell and Dominic Longo. Wade, Pollack and Mitchell involved in the last campaign. Slater up. He'll get away from Sweeney. Throw in for Australia. Tony Vidmar's got a long throw. Arnold's coming across. Samuel staying with him. Farina, a touch on. And Van Blurk was coming. If he was still there, it would have been on for him. Watson away. Djurakovic. Farina. Aurelio Vidmar. And maybe the first time shot. Slater again. Zelic. Deflection, now Hooper back for Canada. Well, Canada are playing like there's about 10 to go and they're hanging on for the, uh, the result from the first leg. They've been under enormous pressure in this first half. No penalty there really. And on with Slater. The Lons player, they value him at around $2 million on the transfer market in Europe. He signed a new three-year deal a few months ago. Oh, 
Ivanovic. Tobin inside. That's confident play. Djurakovic goes long for Arnold. Van Blurk again, typically following through on the left. Not enough height on that. It goes straight to Vidmar, though. Farina wants it this time. The ball for Slater. Mitchell. Dasovic. Haven't seen too much of him in the first half. Miller. Bunbury. And here's Dasovic. And it was Ivanovic. Arnold looks up for support. Ivanovic hasn't a man near him for at least 20 metres. Van Bloerk. Arnold. Van Bloerk's toying with the idea of Slater down that left. Slater easily gets away from Sweeney. In comes the delightful ball and Watson was there for Canada. Well, it's corner number six. That summed it up today, John. Six corners for Australia. It was a boxing match. It stopped the fight, but unfortunately it doesn't reflect on the scoreboard. But again, good play. Slater really giving Sweeney the run around. Craig Forrest has pulled off two saves in particular. Vidmar block and the uh, Arnold save as well. He's pushed it around the post. Djurakovic. Ned Zelic. Arena. Well, that was again a blatant foul there from Samuel. And I don't want to say anything, John, to criticise referees, but in all fairness, the yellow card should have been produced at least 20, 25 minutes ago. When they're well, again, doing they're... fouls like that around the, uh, the penalty area in their own defensive third. Well, they've been allowed to get away with it, and while they're allowed to get away it. with it, you'll keep doing it. So. Uh... Tobin, Arnold, Farina, Vidmar are deep. Three of them have made a run. There goes Vidmar. And too deep in fact. Maybe the ball should have come in a bit earlier. Craig Forrest will be relieved if the scoreline stays like this after 45 minutes. There's around five minutes of normal time left in this first half. I'm sure coach uh, Bob Lenarduzzi would be happy for half time too because Canada, looking from their perspective, they really have to do a lot more when they're in possession of the ball. Not that uh, from the Australian point of view we're looking at that so much, but they really just haven't had a lot, had a lot to offer once they've got possession of the ball. Real desperation stuff like that. Commitment from Australia again. Been a real commitment without the ball. And Djurakovic was trying it. Oh, Vidmar rather. Tony Vidmar. A desperate lunch to keep it in. How have you seen his first game at uh, right back? Yeah, it's been quite good. I, it's always a risk to switch players from uh, left side where he normally operates to the right side. It just un unbalances some. But uh, he's slotted into it very comfortably. And again, another corner. To give you a comparison, John, seven corners for Australia now. Eight attempts on goal. No corners for Canada and just one attempt when Mitchell had the chance in the seventh minute. Will this be the goal for Australia? Yeah. 
Tobin trying to nod it on. That's what we're talking about with Canada, Andy, just getting rid of the ball. Unless they're going to do a lot more with it, they're not going to pose many problems to Australia. Is that a penalty? Well, Vidmar went down. Well, the first reaction, it is a penalty. And uh, playing at home, it is a penalty. And that's ironic. Farina complains and gets the yellow card. Farina has been fouled at least on half a dozen occasions. And easy to criticise referees. It did appear a penalty. And that, John, is Farina's second yellow. He got booked in the first game in Edmonton. So he misses the next one. We'll have a look at the replay. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt as a penalty, Andy. If you're playing away from home, you probably don't get it, but playing at home, uh, especially, is a, is a penalty. And sympathy for Farina, he's been kicked all day with no yellow card for the offenders. The frustration comes out in yelling at the referee and he gets the yellow. I mean, that is quite incredible. Well, Mr. Abada is the second uh, youngest referee, FIFA referee from Japan. And there's got to be questions asked about his performance. They've come so close on nine occasions. Van Bloerk, Farina. He's got the measure of these defenders. Not this time. And a clever play by Mitchell, but Zelic read that play well. Zelic, Aurelio Vidmar. The ball for Arnold inside for Farina. And now Farina again, the corner. Well, what does a player have to do to score a goal here? Australia have done everything except celebrate a goal. It stays at nil-nil. The frustrations continue, particularly for Frank Farina. <laughs> Forrest comes. Away by Navilio. Ivanovic inside. The flag stays down. Farina is down on the ground at the moment. Here comes the ball. And there are numbers coming through. He should have hooked it back a bit more, Slater. And Yallop having a few words to say to Vidmar. Well, that's very unsportsmanlike from the Canadians, having a few words to say to Vidmar like that. The corner taken quickly. Vidmar up. Farina! And if anyone deserved to score, it was Farina. And for any young players watching, a great lesson. Farina has thrown himself around today. He's had a few opportunities he perhaps should have put away. But he didn't lose his confidence. He just kept at it. And that is a spectacular goal. And no one deserved it more than Farina. Booked unjustly for the yellow card. The scissors kick. That is a great goal. Well done, Frank Farina. It's a goal he'll never forget. One nil Australia. Slater. The deadly ball inside. They all went up. Vidmar got the touch. Farina with a bicycle kick. The Socceroos are ahead. And we'll just get some comments from a man, an interested spectator. A man who uh, should be out there today. He'd be disappointed he isn't. Robbie Zabika. G'day, Andy. How are you? <laughs> what a tremendous goal, eh? I almost fell off my chair about eight times, and I finally did in the last, so it's just fantastic for Australia. 1-0 up, good on you. How do you feel being in the stands? A different perspective from up here? 
Oh, of course, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be out there, but uh, that's not to be. Uh, the guys have just shown tremendous spirit. The only magical ingredient we didn't have was a goal, and finally it came. Uh, and before time, just before half time, look at that, it's half time already, fantastic. Can they go on with it, uh, Robbie? For sure. Let's look at two or three. Okay, Robbie, uh, we'll get some closing comments on the first half from Johnny. It's been a half where Australia have dictated the pattern of play. It took them so long to score. It came just seconds after the 45 minutes was up. Frank Farina was the hero. Fully deserved lead. Well, few could deny it should be more. I mean, the, the possibility now, Andy, is that Canada have to come out now in the second half. They have to open up more, and this is going to create more opportunities for Australia. Great time to get a goal. It's always a great time to get a goal, but just before half time, you just go in on a high, the sense of frustration is gone, and great that uh, Frankie Farina scored. I mean, he really has deserved that goal, and to score it in such a spectacular fashion is really apt reward for the Socceroos for what's been a very good first half. Okay, on that note, it's 1 0 at the Sydney Football Stadium. Let's cross now to Les Murray. Thank you, Andy, and with me is the assistant Australian coach, Les Scheinflug. I should think a very relieved Les Scheinflug. I don't know what the count was on those chances, but I don't think we've had as many as that in any sort of game. But you'd be very relieved about breaking the deadlock. Yes, we were wondering when the goal is going to come. I think they're playing extremely well. They're, they're, they're playing through the flanks. Uh, we're creating the chances. We hit the post, but uh, it had to come. And uh, we have to keep up the pressure now. OK, what's the difference now that, the, that you managed to break through in that uh, dying minute, as opposed to going in to the half uh, still at nil-nil? It would have been pretty difficult for you, wouldn't it? Oh, it's difficult, yes, but I'm, I know they, will, they have to collapse in the second half. They had long flights and uh, it took us a long time to get over it. We have to keep up the pressure all the way through the next 45 minutes. We just can't sit back and rely on this one nil. So what you're saying is that you'll keep it, keep it up, Not uh, you're not going to uh, be cautious and try to bottle them up in the second half? No, you can't. It's the worst mistake you can do. We have to play it safe in the back, yes. But, I mean, we have to continue with the plan which we had in the first half. We have to attack them and we have to play through the wing and the wings and that's all. And I think we, uh, the goals will come. OK, Les, well, good luck in the second half. Uh, hope we can hold on to at least that one-nil lead. Thank you. Good on you. Les Scheinflug, the Australian assistant coach. And, of course, we'll have more from the Sydney Football Stadium after this short break. And welcome back to the Sydney Football Stadium. The halftime score in the crunch match, the crunch World Cup match between Australia and Canada, is a one-nil lead to the Australian, uh, to the Australians. That goal coming in the dying minute of the first half, a spectacular one from uh, Frank Farina. The crowd here, by the way, estimated to be around 28 to 30,000. One of the better crowds, certainly in recent years, for a soccer match, and a very buoyant crowd at the moment, indeed. Significantly, none of the Australian uh, substitutes are warming up at the moment. A couple of the Canadians are, though, so there might be some changes early in the second half for them. But if you recall the first half, you will recall a half which contained the greatest cavalcade of uh, pressure football and missed chances by the Australians, but brilliant chances they were set up as well. Let's recall now the first half highlights. Side commitment also from Ivanovic. Zelic, cool play. Slater. Arnold got his right. Through the middle, Van Blurk. Van Blurk with a big goal! Oh, what a save! What a save from Forrest. Australia, one minute and 50 seconds into the game. It was almost 1-0. A replica of what we saw against New Zealand. An excellent start, Andy. The boys have taken it right to Canada, and the fact that Van Blurk involved in the attacks uh, indicates that a very positive attitude from Australia, but a splendid start by them. And now the header! Vidmar and Farina came through. Frank Farina out to prove a, a few points to some critics who were disappointed with his form last week. Easily cut out by Watson, Van Blurk there. Vidmar looks on, Farina's on side. Arnold's in the centre. Farina, he might have it himself. He lines it up inside. The touch on the side goes to Spader again. Graham Arnold came through the centre. What a dynamic start from the Socceroos. 
Great turn by Bunbury. The advantage rule. In comes Mitchell, the chance, and Schwartz have got down. Well, Canada could have hit Australia there. Vidmar, he was looking for Slater because Slater was free on that far right. That's, that's smart play. Yes, it is, because there wasn't really enough support coming through because you can see the consequence. Van Blurk's taken off. It needs to be a good one. Off the post. Farina. Farina shoots. Oh. The goal should have been there for Australia. The referee's allowed play to continue, but when the ball goes out, I think the captain should be booked. Farina now for Australia. Blocked by Foss. Oh, Vidmar. Where was the shot? Tony Vidmar back. Zelic might make amends. He shoots and taken by Forrest. What can one say? Vidmar. The ball inside. Oh! That's what we're talking about with Canada, Andy. Just getting rid of the ball. Unless they're going to do a lot more with it, they're not going to pose many problems to Australia. First reaction, it is a penalty, and uh, playing at home, it is a penalty, and that's ironic. Farina complains and gets the yellow card. Farina has been fouled at least on half a dozen occasions. The corner taken quickly. Vidmar up. Farina! Justly for the yellow card, the scissors kick, that is a great goal. Well done, Frank Farina. It's a goal he'll never forget. 1-0 Australia, Slater, the deadly ball inside. They all went up, Vidmar got the touch. Farina with a bicycle kick. The Socceroos are ahead. Well, there it is, Frank Farina scoring that beauty and Australia leading one goal to nil. At least 45 minutes still to go. Well, it might be a little bit early for you to uh, book your tickets for the 1994 World Cup finals, whether Australia qualifies or not. But I can tell you tickets are in huge demand, so it might be a good idea to organise your tour early. And thanks to Australian airline, Australia's favourite airline, Qantas, you can do so right now. Here are some details. Over four weeks in 1994, the world's best football teams compete for the most sought-after trophy on earth, the World Cup. The SBS World Cup Tour is your chance to be there and experience the world's biggest football event. Travel to America flying Qantas. Packages are available now for the first and second rounds plus the finals. The SBS World Cup Tour. Tickets are limited, so ring 008 818 879 now for details. Welcome back to the Sydney Football Stadium. The team's almost out there in the middle. Looking across to the Australians, no changes, which is not really a surprise. Although I do notice that Carl Valentine, the number seven, who's uh, next to the bench is running out and who he has replaced, we'll soon find out. Valentine is in. Um, Sweeney still out there, Miller, that looks like Mitchell, although Mobilio isn't, well Mobilio, it looks like Mobilio is the player who's been replaced. The number seven, Valentine, he came on at the exact same time in the first leg. The Valentine is one of the four World Cup veterans of 86 in this team. West Indian born. This is his 31st international 
for his country and uh, it looks like it is Mobilio who is the man off. Australia running from the left to the right hand side. A busy first half for them. They do have the goal to show for it. Frank Farina scored his 10th goal for Australia. Bunbury. Again, the familiar shadow of Tobin right on him. Mark Schwarzer has had very little to do, in fact, just the one save. There'll be no complaints from the Marconi goalkeeper of the year. Plays with the Coca-Cola Soccer League champions, Marconi Fairfield. Do you expect the same intensity uh, that we saw in the first five or ten minutes in this? Well, it has to half? be. They ideally kill them off. Uh, the interesting change by Canada means it's more attacking uh, sort of formation for them. They really have to come out now because a one-nil loss uh, doesn't do them any good. And in coming out, one believes it's going to create more opportunities for Australia. Well, the keeper, I'm surprised he hasn't come off his lineup confidently today. He's stood still and that was really a ball for him to come out to Van Blurk just a down there by Yallop Ipswich Town teammate of Forests Vidmar he had an outstanding season with Vatigan in Belgium same could be said about Zelic at Borussia Dortmund Tony Vidmar the touch by Arnold for Zelic Zelic gets the better of the captain Miller. It's with Arnold now and they get yet another corner. The tenth corner of the game for Australia. Hard to work out uh, what sort of crowd we have. I would estimate around 30,000. Maybe a bit more. But a great attendance here at the Sydney Football Stadium. For one of the most important games in Australian soccer history. Van Blurk in. And Farina went for it. And Tony Vidmar inside Farina. And it bounces over. Oh no, it's not going to happen again. Frank Farina can't believe it. Either can the fans. Either can the co-commentator. The former soccer route captain, Johnny Warren. Well, Frank knows it better than anyone else. Harder to miss than uh, put it away from there. And just one more goal, I would uh, suspect John would kill the game off. And wrap it up for Australia. But then again, Australia just cannot afford to concede one. At the moment, it's 2-2 two -two on aggregate but Australia would go through to the next round on the away goals rule. In went Ivanovic. Important for Milan Ivanovic not to uh, concede a yellow. He was booked against the Solomon Islands earlier in this campaign. Already Farina has been booked over two legs now against Canada. Mitchell, Schwarzer with his eye on the ball, the quick confident take. Bunbury came charging through. Farina, Vidmar coming through. That's a good ball, Arnold's gone deep. There's Slater, the Lons midfielder. Deflection. Good take by Forrest. Ivanovic. Dasovic. In was Jurakovic there on Mitchell. So Mitchell's moved into the center of the midfield. The Hooper's gone wide and Valentine has combined with Mitchell in the center there. Uh, made some 
changes to their midfield formation. Slater, Farina, Zelic has got Van Blurk free on that left. Hooper and Van Blurk. Aurelio Vidmar's back there. Looking for Farina. And away by Watson. Oh. Bunbury has built the free kick there. Dasovic, Hooper, overlapping is Yallop. There's numbers in the box for Canada at the moment. Yallop, no chance at all there for Canada. That move, Andy, indicates uh, the different Canada we're going to see in the second half, throwing a lot of men forward. They have to get back in this game now. And in doing that, it's going to create more opportunity, I believe, for Australia at the other end. The counter it's quite a, just quite Australia. simply a matter of taking chances where well, 11, 9 or 10 chances uh, so far and uh, they've really got to be taken to really knock Canada off. I mean, it's been all Australia, but still the game's in the balance. Valentine gets it back from Yallop. Now Hooper runs straight into Farina. Valentine, again Ivanovic has the easy job, the ball for Farina, the keeper comes, well read this time by Forrest, been a bit unsure coming off the line and Dasovic, he's managed to keep it in, Ivanovic and Bunbury. Well I think the experience of playing in England has given Bunbury a bit of an advantage in these 50-50 balls, he really I don't think there was any doubts that perhaps Miller did concede, concede the foul there, but Bunbury is a craftsman and... Uh, knows how to milk a free kick. He knows. He definitely knows. And he would have learnt that in England. Valentine's cross, blocked by Ivanovic. Yell up the long searching ball. Samuel's up there. So is Bunbury. joined West Ham midway through last season. They were promoted to the Premier League. He's played in all the games in this qualifying phase for Canada. And in fact, Bunbury was the first Canadian to score a hat-trick in international football. That was a couple of years ago against Bermuda, Zelic. And he gets the throw in. Surrounded by three players. And Zelic shows us his class. Well, Sweeney's been doing that all day. And there was no need for Watson to run across anyway. You know, he gives a yellow for Farina. That's absolute stupidity because I know that Robbie Slater should not have retaliated there, but when well, you clearly get kicked tackle, back the park. Clearly a tackle from behind. The danger for a Slater is uh, that he retaliates and gets the yellow. Kick, bit of pushing, yes. There was a couple of socceroos there, nudging. Frank Farina scored a goal for Strasbourg in the first round of the French competition, then joined up with the Socceroos. Tobin on. Arnold. Couldn't get it back for Slater. Slater got in there. No love lost, uh, love lost rather between Slater and Sweeney. That's a dangerous looking ball for Hooper. And Schwartz, oh, it's gone in! What was Schwartz doing there? He should have pushed it around. Canada are back on level.
normal terms here now. Hooper the scorer. He should have palmed it around. And Canada now have the upper hand. Australia now have to score two goals and not concede another or if they can score again it will go into extra time. Funny game as they say Andy, Canada have not been in the game at all. And now of course we have the situation where uh, Australia have to score twice or at least once to take it into extra time. And caught out at the back that all it takes is uh, one mistake despite the superiority of Australia and the opportunities. It's a big ask for them now. Well, they've had so many opportunities to add to this score. There's plenty of time left. There's 35 minutes left in the game. They have to regroup and grab this second. And the goal will make such a difference to the Canadians now. Valentine, Yallop, on by Van Blurk, Ivanovic to Zelic. Ivanovic through for Arnold. And smart play again by Forrest. Slater. Dasovic now for Canada. Mitchell across to Bunbury. You can see the change of the Canadian play now. The scorer, Hooper. To Yallop. Down the line is Valentine. Ivanovic. He's played well today for Australia. Farina who's onside. Farina and Watson only Arnold up there to support him. Farina should take Watson on. Farina. Good idea, but just running out of space. We've seen Farina win a penalty in the uh, exact same position against Argentina. That was back in 88. It'll be a real test now for Australia. How they react to that equaliser. was fouled earlier. Jurakovic and Aurelio Vigmar this time. And Aurelio keeps it in. Van Blurk. Yallop. Good block by Arnold. Zelic. He's got Arnold and Farina. Zelic might go it himself. Then Zelic goes with it. And he miscues at the final hurdle. Very unlike Ned Zilic, the first time we've really seen that run from him. But a great run, the type of thing Ned's got to do more often. Australia needs him doing that now. Tough times, he's just such a beautiful dribbler of the ball, able to glide past opponents. And as the game goes on, uh, Australia needs more and more of that from Ned.
survived play on, the ball was still in. Mitchell. Schwarzer takes it comfortably. Slater. And straight through the middle. Again, Canada have won a bit of possession in the middle now in the last five or ten minutes. And Yellow, great work from the veteran. Ivanovic. Sweeney on, that'll go out. Well, no yellow card. The fouls continue. Vidmar looking for Arnold, Hooper on, Djurakovic in there, now Dasovic, Tobin away, Mitchell, and that'll be a yellow. Which is a correct decision, it's a professional foul, but uh, it seems ironic, doesn't it, you get a foul for uh, handling the ball, you can kick all day as a Canadian defensive, got away with what they've uh, been able to by the referee, but a little bit of... Uh, doesn't seem fair, does it, Andy, when you, you get the handball, the yellow. But it's been a better second half from Canada. Lena Ducey, the coach of Canada, last in the first game, changed things at halftime. He's changed again today with good results. It seems to suit Canada better to come forward and have a go at Australia rather than to sit back. The first corner of the game for Canada. Australia have had 11. The most important statistic. It's Australia 1, Canada 1. Back to where they started again. They need a goal to keep this tie alive. And Schwartz, who looked like the touch had come off the keeper. That's what Bunbury's asking. Smart goal kick, Slater. Three Australians up there with him. On his left is Van Bloor. Zelic wants it inside. Djurakovic. Here's Tony Vidmar. Slater's taken off. Valentine is with him. Get out! Get out! Tobin, will he go long? Arnold should win the header here. Vidmar. Too strong for Djurakovic. Slater comes across. And Valentine. Just taking the pressure momentarily away from his defence. Up was Watson. Was Farina and Samuel. Not really the best of clearances by Valentine. Zelic, he was looking for Vidmar. And now Mitchell has got Bunbury on his left. Ivanovic. And Vidmar, it starts all over again for Australia. wondering about the long balls John whether that's perhaps the best way they're trying to well it's not the best way the best way is to play as they did in the first half the, the players starting to get a little bit anxious Andy times uh, still not uh, 
crucial, but uh, the Canadians sensing that uh, the stuff's got Australia a little bit uh, under pressure. Australia has to score twice, or once at least to take it into uh, extra time. But there's the time for the cool heads. 25 minutes left. Well, Australia really uh, haven't put enough pressure on this Canadian goal in the second half. Great steal by Farina. And he's got to be joking. Samuel just pushed Farina away. And the referee's allowing too much to go on, which... Well, they disrespect to the Japanese officials, but this is a very amateurish refereeing exhibition. Well, and for a crucial World Cup qualifier, questions have to be asked as to why they've decided to uh, get Japanese officials. What poise by Zelic. And over uh, the top by Zelic. But as you said earlier, it's important for him to get involved. The beauty of Zelic, able to glide past the opponent. Sure, the shot is not what he liked, but uh, Ned, or Australia, needs a lot more of those uh, taking chances like that from Zelic. Back to the referee, Andy. I mean, once, once you set the standard early on and allow players to get away, with certain things it's very hard later on to tighten up I think that's a mistake that he's made the back pass rule and no one's coming through to test Jalla, uh, Forrest rather Vidmar Aurelio getting the better there of Yallop Farina Samuel has got away with what you could say, to use a cliche, murder. That's, uh, I think now on my calculations, his sixth or seventh foul. And not a yellow yet. And particularly that one, it is a professional foul. Farina through. That's the second time Farina's been on his way. The second time he's been brought down viciously. Crowd trying to urge their team on. Good take by Forrest. The crowd, 25,982. A little bit disappointing. They have created a bit of an atmosphere. Or wasn't there a bit of climbing on the back there of Arnold? Slater. Van Bloek. Well, what was Samuel? Surely he was hanging on to uh, Van Bloek there. Didn't know where the ball was and went for the player. The danger of the counter from Canada. Zelic. Up was Yallop. Valentine. Jurakovic there for Australia, Aurelia Vidmar. And it's, well, it's taken how long? 24th minute of the second half. And the captain goes into the book. The referee saw that one. Van Bloek. Van Bloek, and that was off the body, I think, of Sweeney. Jurakovic for Slater, inside, and 
not enough really to Vidmar was coming through, so was Arnold. Twenty minutes of normal time left. Do or die for Australia at the Sydney Football Stadium. Arnold on. Felina. Back pass. Good clearance. Great clearance from Forrest finding Mitchell. Sweeney, a veteran from 86 Mexico finals. And Bunbury will keep that in. No. Experience legs of Ivanovic charging on for Australia. Arnold Ooh, touch and go. Uh, yes, I think offside. It's been interesting today. Arnold hasn't had the opportunities that he would have liked. They've really fallen to the likes of Farina and Vidmar. is the top scorer in this team for Australia. He's put away 16 goals in 43 internationals. Farina scored today to make it 10. Dasevich and away by Jurakovic. Arnold and Samuel. Tobin on. Zelic. Aurelia Vidmar on his left. And Farina and Watson. Valentine back for Sweeney. Mitchell running through the middle. And the header on. He's onside. And just missed. By Bunbury, although uh, the referee has spotted a foul in that box. Bunbury on Van Bloerk. Now the clock is against Australia. 17 minutes of normal time left. Australia have only made it to the World Cup once. Back in 74. In crucial home legs. In the last few campaigns they've fallen at this identical hurdle. against Israel four years ago here they had to win the campaign before that in 85 they drew against Scotland they needed to win and before that back here in Sydney but at the cricket ground they lost to New Zealand and they had to win it's the same story here as well they have to win I think for Australia's point of view, Andy got to get back more to try and to open them up on the sides. They did it so well in the first half. They're starting to get a little bit anxious and, and trying to go through the middle, trying to take the direct route. And once you do that, you're going to play into the hands of Canada. So just settle it down and try and spread it wide. Get Van Blerk involved on the left, Vidmar and Slater on the right, and try and open them again. That's when they were doing so well. Interception by Samuel. Mitchell. Dasevich. Sweeney. Totally different Canada this half. Dangerous play by Jurakovic. And 
the most experienced campaigner for Australia, David Mitchell. Made his international debut back in 1981. He'll be coming on soon. And the player coming off is, in fact, Robbie Slater. The referee has waved play on, so Slater has to stay on. <laughs> We've seen it all today, John. Slater, I mentioned earlier in the telecast, had a hamstring problem. Suffered a training last night. There were some question marks earlier today whether he would be starting. Arnold was cued, but still Van Bloek in there. And the change is being made now. Robbie Slater off, succumbing to that hamstring problem. And Dave Mitchell has put away 11 goals for Australia. They'd love him to score just one here to keep the tie alive. Formerly of Swindon Town, who were promoted to the Premier League, he's joined the Turkish club Izmir. The first change for Australia. Mitchell with a good interception. Play on. Vidmar. He's got Farina on the right. He goes to for Mitchell. Samuel back there. It's still on for Jurekovic. Mehmet Jurekovic has scored a goal in his soccer career. And he'll never ever score a more important goal than that. And the goal was all Jurekovic. He took the free kick quickly. The play went up the other end. Mitchell's telling challenge for the ball. Jurekovic saw the keeper off his line. And Australia are well and truly in the game now, John. A few could deny that they've deserved it overall. Things were starting to look grim, but uh, great to see Jurekovic score. He's, for me, one of the performers for Australia. Good challenge from Mitchell. We're talking about Samuel and criticising him for the uh, some of the fouls, but he's been a great performer for Canada. But thankfully that's in and Australia back in it. And look at Mitchell. That was a challenge off the ball as we were watching the replay. It looks like Sweeney, the number three, was booked. There was an incident as we were watching the replay. It's become a war out there either way. The tie is level. If it stays like this, it'll be comes another extra time scenario and uh, if it's level after that 30 minute extra time period the clash there with Sweeney and Mitchell I don't think Sweeney will uh, come back into the game Canada with 10 men Sweeney has to really get that looked at it'll require stitches Ivanovic Smart play. Didn't give away a, a throw-in. Farina right now. Deflection 
one either way. Very important for Australia not to lose their rhythm, but what about that? Oh, he's got to give him a card at least, surely. Well, Mr. Bata, I don't want to really give a go at this referee, but he wouldn't be able to referee a fifth division match in the New South Wales State League after his performance today. There's been no, nothing really given. You know, I'm not being biased. No, sure. it's, it's a professional yeah, that's foul. A professional and foul. The denial of a goal scoring opportunity is a red card offence. That is the FIFA directive. We saw Robbie Zabika sent off last week. The strict interpretation of that is exactly that. Offside. Offside. Vidmar was offside. Ten minutes left in this drama-packed game at the Sydney Football Stadium. What was the old saying? Soccer's not a matter of life and death, it's more important than that. I feel sorry for Farina, he's been fouled all day. And one of the few players to get a yellow card for opening his mouth. Mitchell, through for Bunbury. Corner kick. Nine minutes, normal time left. The Australian defence has to regroup now. The dreams, the hopes of a nation resting on these gallant Socceroos. They fought their way back. Spill by Schwarzer, away by Farina, Arnold chasing, Cooper back there. Mitchell should keep it in if he plays it quickly, no. <laughs> Clearing kick, straight to Yallop. Hooper, Mumbry there ahead of Drakovic. Farina. Well, at least it's a frame for Australia. Canadians are much more physical than the first leg. Can't really match Australia for skill. And Mitchell! Samuel was the player down as Mitchell came through. Canada still there with 10 men. Sweeney. Still hasn't come out of the dressing rooms. Samuel the player down at the moment. This extra man advantage, Australia really need to try and capitalise as quickly as possible. Sorry. What do you think, John, the remaining few minutes? Well, uh, Canada not making the change because of the possibility of uh, extra time, aren't they? They've already made one change to make another one now. They can't freshen the team up. But I think the key injury is that one there to Samuel. He, we've criticised him for the fouls on Farina, but he's had a ripper of a game for Canada, the heart and soul of the defence. back there middle of through that's a great ball for Dasovic and it's been given as a goal kick that came off uh, Wittmar that should have been a corner Australia get a bit of a good decision
level on aggregate, it's 3-3. Three, three. Could go to extra time and crucial slip there by Djurakovic and another one there by Bunbury. And Milan Ivanovic for nine, John, perhaps the uh, best player for Australia today. Zelic, Farina, Fidmar coming through. Farina might go it alone. Farina! Well, wide right of the mark in the end. He's had a few opportunities today. That one well wide. The most celebrated Australian players. And joining me and Johnny up here has uh, been the most interested spectator, the suspended keeper, Robbie Zabika. Robbie, how do you see it now? Oh, it's just unbelievable stuff here. Um, you know, hopefully we can get this uh, the, the third goal, which is the most important one. Uh, but then again, we have to just try and hold out as well, you know, make sure we don't get a, a, a goal against us. Farina back now for Vidmar. Looking for Arnold, and that could have just deflected back for Arnold or either Tony Vidmar or Farina, but great character to come back, uh, Robbie. Yeah, thank you. Tremendous. You know, he's all heart. Uh, just been terrific. You put that down to fatigue. The uh, fitness factor now. Yeah, I, it? I felt the, um, you know, our boys really put in a lot the first 45 minutes. And, uh, you know, they were sort of uh, really sucking in the air at the end of the 45. So uh, hopefully, you know, they're, uh, you know, there's no doubt they must, you know, they're fit enough for, for the whole game. So there's not a problem there. Ivanovic, you'd be delighted being an Adelaide City teammate. Yeah, he's a class player. Djurakovic, who kept Australia in the game with that delightful header, is looking for Mitchell. Mitchell, inside for Vidmar. Numbers are back there, Djurakovic. No one coming through at the keeper. And it's turned into a superb ball for Mitchell. Arnold back there stealing from Bunbury. They're offside at the moment. Farina Zondo. Farina. A save by Forrest. Bidmar. Oh, what a save by the keeper. Tremendous work from Forrest. He's kept Canada alive as well. First it was Farina. Then it was Aurelio Vidmar. Farina. There's two minutes of normal time left. He's kept it in. Mitchell in the centre. Aurelio Vidmar with him. Van Bloek inside. Just seconds ago, it looked like it was going to be the victory Australia so richly deserved. But Forrest, who off his line has been a bit dicey, uh, with off two great saves. One minute and three seconds of normal time left in the game. As it stands, It will go into extra time. But Australia, they could have wrapped it up just seconds ago. A blatant handball, the referee just waves play on. Mitchell, that's a dangerous looking ball, Watson away. Tobin up, Zelic, Arnold, oh, that could be, no it's not dangerous this time, 
Drakovic has got numbers on the right. Farina, there's men inside. Farina. Farina. Mitchell blocked. A scissor kick wasn't on. Arnold was waiting. And Australia. Let's hope they don't rue the fact that they haven't been able to take these chances, John. Well, I think for any neutral observer, Andy, that had the opportunities, it's just one of those uh, one of those things haven't been able to put them away. Yeah, unfortunately, in the final analysis, it doesn't count. Canada is still alive. Now the question of extra time, who's going to be better equipped to cope with it? What a saviour Durakovic was. With 13 minutes to go, the unlucky number has been a lucky one for Australia. Because they still are in this tie. 3-3 on aggregate. We're playing now a minute of injury time. Will it be a dramatic finish to the game from Farina? Farina can't get past Watson. Sweeney. An Australian throw in. The Coca-Cola Socceroos. Serena couldn't get that touch back there. Jurakovic. And Bunbury. <laughs> well, he's given Jurakovic a yellow card for standing on the ball. Well, if you wanted to write down his number, why did he not play to continue? He's writing it out now, but it's another yellow for Australia. Vidmar, Farina, and remember Jurakovic. Two minutes of injury time up. Sweeney. Vidmar, the back pass. Schwarzer confidently away. Van Blurk on. Vidmar. Inside for Zelic. Zelic. Oh, it was on for Arnold Dorf. For Arena. Gee, it looked like. Now Mitchell shakes his man and Samuel. Mitchell. So does the keeper. But just moments earlier, John, it looked like Zelic was almost going to get it across on that right with the two men. And that goal has lifted the Australians as the referee, I'm surprised, has allowed this much injury time. That should really be it. So it's down to extra time. Well, John, Australia still in the uh, in the hunt. Well, very much in the hunt. It's been their game, opportunity-wise. Uh, unfortunately, haven't taken them all. The additional Mitchell. Mitchell's quite uh, quite penetrative. He's added a lot uh, since he came on, and they'll be looking to him, particularly in the, this extra time now, giving a little bit of width on the left, which has opened the game up a little bit for Australia. I see him as a plus. One would hope that Australia would be a little bit stronger than the Canadians to finish on top. OK, Johnny, let's cross now to Les Murray. Andy Pascalidis, Johnny Warren and Robert Zabika at the microphone there. And a reminder again that this is not sudden death extra time, as was the case in the World Youth Championships. It will go all the way, 15 minutes each way. And then, of course, if it's still level on aggregate, it'll go to the shootout. Let's take a short break and return to the Sydney Football Stadium in a moment. Welcome back to the Sydney Football Stadium. Extra time will decide the outcome. If not that, 
It'll be down to penalties. Bob Lenarduzzi, the coach there, with the manager, Les Wilson, trying to spur on the Canadians. Much better second half from them. They fought back to equalise 10 minutes after the resumption. And then Mehmet Jurakovic was the saviour. 13 minutes of normal time left. He pulled it away from that 1-1 score line to 2-1. Ned Zelic knows all about pressure. Former young Socceroo and Olympian. The Australians have got so much experience. That was the head clash. A result of the head clash with Mitchell and Sweeney and Robbie Zabika. I don't know whether we uh, both have uh, lost some hair today or my mine's got a bit greyer, but you've been you've been fairly uh, sedate there. You've sat back. Yeah, it's, you it's, must know something we don't know. <laughs> no, it's been a great game. You know, uh, Australia desperately unlucky, especially the first half. They, you know, they could have scored six clear-cut chance goals. Um, it's just very unfortunate. Um, you know, the goal in the second half for Canada uh, was a bit of bad luck for us and threw us out a bit. But, um, you know, full credit to the boys. They, they've come back. Mehmet's goal was just, uh, just sensational. The header was just great. And, uh, you know, I really favour, you know, Australia at the moment. How do you think Eddie would approach this? How, what would he be saying or have said to his players? Well, I think Eddie, you know, the main thing is uh, fatigue at the moment. The boys, are, you know, be a bit run down. Hopefully no cramps will set in, in in any of the guy's legs. So, um, you know, he'll, he'll pl probably play it the same. He'll, he'll say just keep it a bit tighter in defence, make sure that they don't counter-attack. And, um, you know, I think with all these misses that we've had the first 90 minutes, I think they're all going to come in the next half an hour. Listo Abata from Japan, again, signals the restart. First period of extra time. 15 minutes each way. If it's still locked at this scoreline, it'll go to penalties. Australia in that first 90 minutes had 17 attempts on goal. They could really use a player like Slater, but they haven't really lost that much in uh, Mitchell. No, not at all. Mitchell's just been terrific. Uh, unfortunate again, he got a knock in the first five minutes he came on, but he's still out there fighting, you know, that's that's true grit. Valentine, the only change made by the Canadians. And look at the space Bunbury has. And Schwartz have got down to that one. It's hard really not to be too critical of Mark because the uh, the goal they scored, he, he really should have grabbed that one or pushed it around, but yeah, it's one it's of the lessons uh, of international football. Oh, for sure, you know, it's just great for Mark to be out there. You know, uh, three weeks ago, you know, he was in Sydney just relaxing, so he's out here playing a World Cup and, you know, he's only 20 years of age and he's just a great goalkeeper and player of the future. Thank you, Robbie Zabika. One of the, uh, well, a guest commentator today. And a man who uh, would have been out there but for the unfortunate incident in the first leg in Canada. Ivanovic, a real inspiration today. Bunbury drops, Yalapon, Ivanovic, Ooh, that's the first mistake by him, as Valentine marched straight through. Arnold uh, noticeably uh, dropping back for Mitchell, which is a good move really, uh, Arnold's accustomed to that role as well. Mark Schwartz's last international was here against Israel in a World Youth Qualifier before the 1991 Portugal World Youth Championships. Farina's onside. Watson back.
delivery. Tobin, in goes Ivanovic. Arnold, the two front men are up there, ready. The long ball for Mitchell, Samuel giving his eye on it. Mitchell waits for the support. Vidmar, inside is Arnold. Arnold still going. Just maybe I thought Arnold might have tried it first time. That was a good build up by Australia. Vidmar, Van Blurg. Did a lot of running, particularly in that first half. And he gets the corner. Thirteen corners for Australia and just two for Canada. Vidmar got up there, but it was away by the captain Miller. Bumbery. Ivanovic, as cool as ever, the former Red Star Belgrade campaigner, Arnold, that's a good ploy, open up the Canadians, that's a good ball for Mitchell, Mitchell, the keep it a beat, oh it should have been the goal again for Australia, Farina will keep it in, they just needed a touch as well at the back post, Vidmar, and they can't get across this time, but the chance goes begging for Australia. And well, wide right of the mark by Tony Vidmar, in fact, a, a throw in. But it's been surprising Australia have created so much, but they just haven't be able, been able to finish. It's been the story of the game, hasn't it, Andy? It's easy to sit here and... Uh and be critical but there have been so many opportunities this was a game australia should have had well wrapped up before full time fortunately the facts are it's not it's a question now of uh, who is going to be mentally stronger the legs are tired now it's uh, a question who wants to get there the most and you sense that physically australia perhaps in a little bit better shape than canada Van Bloek, the man who had committed the foul on Bunbury. And you've got to pay credit where it's due. Bunbury has done so much work, particularly off the ball. He's dropped back to help his midfield. He's chased. He's been closely tagged by Tobin. Vidmar and Hooper. Vidmar has the height advantage. And a miscue by Van Blurk. That's dangerous. And who? Yes, Hooper came through. Vidmar shakes his man in Miller. And a blatant block by Sweeney. Sweeney's already booked. No. Play on. Here comes Bunbury. Mitchell. There was Ivanovic. They've got to clear it away. No direction, no power. Easy work for Schwarzer. And that was really an ideal opportunity for Canada. And Paul Wade, it looks like, will come into this game. Zelic, it looks like, is the man who's going to come off. As Mitchell and Samuel chase. Through comes Arnold. He's hit it too long. Well, the referee has finally decided to let the change happen. He was looking over here earlier. Zelic was walking across. And now he's ready to make the change. Well, that's really good. But for Ned Zelic, he comes out of the game. The former captain, Paul Wade, comes in. 
And Wade has a few points to prove to the coach after missing the last three. So Australia have made two changes. And just the one by Canada. And Valentine for Mobilio. Sweeney. Tobin on for Farina. Away by Watson. Lidmar drops. That's a great looking ball for Farina. And Forrest read the play very well. Arnold, Mitchell calling for it. Through comes Mitchell, the keeper should come. That might be a dangerous, well it wasn't. Well done by Yallop. And Ipswich Town defender gets the ball back. In was Ivanovic, Wade. Van Blurk, Vidmar down the line. It needed to be a bit quicker and either way it's a throw in for Canada. Five minutes left in this first extra time period. Delightful ball there for Valentine. Farina. Away goes Vidmar. Didn't really turn out to be an advantage for Australia. You wonder why the referee allowed it to go on for so long. And that's a free kick for uh, Canada. Well, double standards really because I can't see where uh, Rino Vidmar has such an advantage when three Canadian defenders are in front of him. And at the other end, Canada have the free kick. Schwartz up. Very strong in the air, very confident. He's picked up his game after that earlier mistake. Through ball for Mitchell. Away by Forrest. Danger as Vidmar comes across. The keeper's still out of his area, but he gets back now. Wade. Farina making a run. That's a lovely ball. Farina and Samuel. Sweeney came back in cover. The former club Bruges. Bari and now Strasbourg striker has been in the thick of the action today. Ivanovic. How clever was that? And the pass was beautiful for Farina. Samuel and Farina. Dangerous play by the Socceroo. A coach John who would want to be a coach yep uh, not the easiest job in the world but it's uh, when we look at our, our favorite topic uh, Andy are going down if it goes to penalties it's uh, a sad way to decide you're saying earlier Canada 14 qualifying games four years for both countries I think Australia better served if they can really try to open up to push it down the flanks. I think they're just tending to play it a little bit too long through the middle. And there's not a lot of change in doing that. It's good to 
see the crowd getting behind the Socceroos. They need all the support. The job still not over. Level and aggregate through three. Just shows you how critical that away goal in Edmonton turned out to be. He's on the ball, and that's a great header. Farina, and there was Watson. Arnold up, Vidmar, it needs a touch, Farina. Farina! And the keeper got down well. The keeper, after a shaky start, has become a real hero for his country. by Bunbury, no one up there except Ivanovic for Australia. Oh. Vidmar. Wade. Mitchell through the middle. Van Bloek, no one's in the, no one's in the box. Was that a handball? Well, it looked like it. Arnold. Vidmar's kept the run going, Mitchell's in there as well. Inside for Vidmar, flags up. They're playing injury time, the first period of extra time. We'll just have a look at the replay here, John. No handball. I noticed that Van Bloek has become a bit more fatigued than the rest of his teammates. Maybe paying the price for a lot of running in the first 90 minutes. This is ominous. Vidmar. Going long again for Farina. Watson, good forceful header away. Well, he's playing a minute and 30 of stoppages in this first period of extra time. Great steal by Tobin. Mitchell. It was almost off of Van Bloek. And there, in fact, is the end of the first period of extra time. It's still a stalemate. Australia lead 2 1, but it's 3 3 on aggregate. With both countries having scored one goal away from home. How did you see the first period, John? Well, Australia's again, but the, the problem for them is, Andy, I think that as they're getting tighter, they're not probably, probably not concentrating as much, but they've really got to build up on the side. I feel that if they're going to play long balls through the middle, that they're really going to play into Canada's hands. We've seen uh, Forrest, their goalkeeper, sweeping at the back so well. And uh, if we're going to play through the middle, I think we're going to limit our chances of winning the match. Well, certainly winning the tie, one should say, but uh, hopefully it doesn't go to penalties. I think it's going to be sad to, to see the game decided that way. But looking ahead, it's going to be a difficult uh, assignment for the winner here today. Argentina, Colombia, Paraguay or Peru. And the way that group is sh shaping the second best qualifier, it would be at this stage, Peru of having lost twice at home, Argentina having won twice away means that the second uh, place team there is most likely to be either Colombia or Paraguay. Oh, the flag up on Farina. The two centre-backs, Watson and Samuel, have kept 
a part of their country's game together. Here comes Vidmar. Will he take Sweeney on? He does, easily. Vidmar might go all the way. Vidmar straight at the keeper. He could, he could have kept going even closer. But the point is, Andy, that the attack came from the flank, and that's where Australia's got to do it in these last 15 minutes. Open Canada on the side. That's where the space is, that's where the tired legs are too. You go through the middle, they've got the numbers plus the keeper. It's relatively easy to sweep up. Now Vidmar. Valentine staying with Aurelio Vidmar, which would have just put him off. And Forrest moved quickly again. The Ipswich Town keeper. He's played 170 games for them since he joined back in 1988. It's a big clearance away for Mitchell. Wade. Back for Ivanovic. Ivanovic. The player of the game for Australia, I think. Farina. And it wasn't strong enough for Wade. Samuel back there. And it comes off Farina in the end. Farina's done a lot of work today. He's covered a lot of ground. Transfer for 1.6 million to Strasbourg from Bari. Van Bloek should get there first. Vidmar and Hooper. Watson. Well, earlier. This is one of the worst exhibitions of refereeing. It's just been too inconsistent. Grant Needham, a striker, is coming on for Canada. And Dasovic goes off. The second change made by the visitors. He plays with the Montreal club. Scored five goals in 14 games in the current season. Cheer goes around the ground as the referee gets one right. Towering Craig Forrest, six foot five inches. Certainly got a kick to match as well. Watson on. Jurakovic keeping his eye on the ball. Arnold has dropped back to the midfield. Tony Vidmar. The substitute staying with him. Vidmar. In comes a good looking cross. Wade has kept up there. Wade looks up. A high floating ball. Vidmar and Mitchell in there. So was Sweeney. And now the substitute need a bit of a miscue. Arnold gets it just in time. Vidmar. Aurelio Vidmar running right through the middle. Aurelio hasn't stopped all day. Not enough on it there for Mitchell. Not the best of clearances. Wade with a great header inside. Mitchell up. No one coming through, Van Blurk. Just maybe timed his run a bit too slow. And Ivanovic can't keep it in. Ivanovic already has a 
a yellow card in the game. That was a yellow card offence as well, John. That should be a red. It was a yellow, and uh, we've criticised the referee today. We'll see what happens now. That's a late challenge from Emmett. And both teams have made two changes. There is, uh, when that incident occurred, 10 minutes of normal time left. This is a hard one to call, John. It's just one opportunity uh, to both sides in the first period of extra time and then Vidmar 44 seconds and this is looking much more serious than what we first thought Jurakovic is down on And the stretcher coming out. The substitute need him down. And we have a situation where perhaps both teams are going to finish with 10 men. Although Jurakovic is up. No. Well, that's what they were clapping. He's been held up there by the physiotherapist, Pedro Ruz. Dr. Kanunga is out there as well. But Grant Needham is the more serious of the two. Tragedy for the Canadian team. Needham had been on the field for less than two minutes. He'll take no further part. Canada are down to 10 men with at least 10 minutes of normal time left. This was the incident. A clash of heads you could see there. Then Djurakovic landed on top of Needham. The most unfortunate way for Canada to finish this second leg at the Sydney Football Stadium. 2-1 Australia lead. 3-3 it's level on aggregate. Farina offside. Well, they've got the extra man now and Drakovic is back on the pitch. So John Australia have the numerical superiority they have the attacking superiority, but they just haven't scored enough goals. And this should really be a huge bonus for them. They seem to be finishing a bit more stronger. They seem to have a bit more energy left. It just might be best for Canada to drop back and play for penalties. Forrest, the, the extra sweep by keeping it in. That can sometimes be a dangerous boy. Wade. Wade's on side. There's the ball. Oh, it took a deflection off Hooper. Across his yellow. And it's come off Van Blue. In this Farina. Throw in for Canada. Well, it's almost identical. Canada had the extra player after Robbie Zabiga was sent off. Needham's down on the sideline, and now Australia have the extra man. 
And really, Avid Mar, he's got the captain, Graham Arnold, on his right. Well, he should have played it to him. Bunbury came back and stole possession. Aurelia should have knocked it across. The flag up there against the substitute, Carl Valentine. The Adelaide City combination there, Tobin to Ivanovic. Farina has got Mitchell. Back inside for Arnold. The shot by Arnold. Just too much underneath it there. The gaps are opening up. He's consistent with his inconsistencies. It's Australia now who uh, have formed a, what appears to be a good defensive line there. The runners are being picked up. Ivanovic away. Vidna with a steal. Hooper, he won't get booked. Even though Vidmar was on his way, he won't get booked. Might get a heart attack with uh, a decision like that. I just can't believe an international like this, the importance of such an international. The refereeing display has just been all over the place, as that attempt by Arnold was as well. On my... Uh, Stopwatch, 13 minutes and 20 seconds into the second period. But I don't stop the watch uh, when there is a delay for injuries or other incidents. So you'd think there would be about four to five minutes for that horrific clash between Needham and Jurakovic. So there's probably about eight minutes left. Too easy for Forrest. Maybe the short ball would have been a better option there. Yallop. Back to the keeper. Bit of a Hagita from Forrest. Vidmar was the man caught offside as he was dropping back. It looks like it could be penalties, John. Well, sadly, it looks like it, Andy. Uh, you go back to that first half where Australia should have been half a dozen in front at half time. So many opportunities. They weren't taken, but it's. Uh, the way the game goes. Sadly, it's going to get, looks as though it's going to go to penalties anyhow. One wonders why in a situation like this it couldn't go to a third match. In a neutral uh, territory, for example, New Zealand or Fiji. Because for either side to lose uh, at this stage on penalties really isn't on. Might make uh, be good for the neutral viewer out there, but uh, for both these teams who have put so much into trying to get through to the USA, it's not the way for it to go. Randy Samuel down there, that was dangerous play for Mitchell. That is another yellow card offence, and uh, no cards forthcoming. 
there'd be about five minutes left here. The match has had everything, hasn't it, John? It has. Just uh, looking ahead, Andy, for whoever he gets through here. I was up at the uh, Copper America in Ecuador and saw all the South Americans playing, and uh, particularly the ones who could uh, meet the winners here today. Colombia is a very fine side. They were very unlucky to lose to Argentina in the semi-finals, albeit on penalties. Paraguay, who was the other team that could uh, well be the opponent, very strong side and also a fine team. They're going to be very difficult to beat away from home. So for either Canada or Australia, this final leg to get to uh, USA is going to be a very daunting assignment. Word has come through on Needham's injury, he's heavily concussed. And that's the latest. Thankfully, it's not more serious than that. And Tobin toying around at the back. Three minutes, I would calculate. Three to three and a half minutes. Wade, Tobin, Jurakovic. Wade. Jurakovic on side. Jurakovic could be the hero! It's gone wide. Gallops there for Canada. And Jurakovic, who had scored the goal that had kept Australia in the game, would have pulled off a dramatic winner. Australia now have two players down. One of those is Jurakovic on your screen. And Tony Vidmar, I think, is uh, cramping up on the sideline. Uh, what more does Australia have to do to finish this team off? Tony Vidmar down at the moment. And Jurakovic runs straight into the keeper. And he did well to uh, get there in the first place. Attempts on goal by Australia in this entire match have been 26 attempts on the Canadian goal and about five by Canada. Mitchell. Corner kick. We've had three and a half minutes of stoppages. Australia are playing against 10 men. Need them out of the game. Heavily concussed, will it be the dramatic finish? Wade misdirecting the header. He was looking for Farina. There's still time left to prevent it going to penalties. Given four minutes and 20 seconds of stoppages. That's down to penalties. The dreaded penalty shootout will control the destiny of both of these teams. And since it really is the goalkeepers who decide what it's all about. I might get Robbie Zabika, the suspended Socceroo, for some thoughts on what goes through a goalkeeper's mind right now. Yeah, well, first of all, Andy, it's it such a great game. Um, it's just unfortunate that uh, we have to get down to penalties. Um, but, uh, no, the keepers have really got, you know, nothing to lose now. Uh, either they're heroes or it's just bad luck. So, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of pressure on the players taking those penalty kicks, I can tell you. A bit unfair on the goalkeeper to... Uh Phase five, a player only has the responsibility of one. Oh, 
No, not at all. Um, you know, that's that's the rules. You know, the the rules are that you uh, have to take five penalties, um, and after that is sudden death. So, um, you know, as I say, the, the goalkeepers can be uh, a hero or it's just bad luck. Do you agree with the shootouts? Uh, <laughs> well, not now, mate. Maybe there should have been a replay, but um, well, that's that's the way the law goes. Uh, we can't change it. Australia really should have wrapped this one up uh, before the shootout. Yeah, I think the boys would be uh, really dreading this now. Uh, the first half was just so, you know, unbelievable. We could have scored six and it could have been all over. But, uh, you know, we're still in it. There's uh, five shots to go. Let's see how we go. Have they been practicing penalties at training? Well, no, that's the unfortunate thing. We never thought it would come down to penalties. Well, no one really ever thought about it. Um, but, um, you know, we've got some uh, good penalty takers there, I don't who, think. Who would you expect would take them? Who, uh, well, I, I reckon, you know, you can guarantee Arnie, Farina, probably Wade. Um, and then it's sort of a lottery after that. It all depends who, who are the most confident at the moment out in the middle. And how hard has it been for you uh, watching this epic today? Well, I think my... Uh, Glove size has gone from a 9 to an 8, you know, I've been biting my fingernails so much today. Um, but it's been a great game, as I say, it's just unfortunate that it has to come down to penalties. But, um, you know, that's the way it goes. You can imagine what uh, the people have been going through right around Australia watching this game as well. Yeah, it's been a great spectacle, you know, the, the crowd's really got their money's worth today. And, um, you know, hopefully <laughs> it will continue on and hopefully we get to South America. It's all down to that man, Mark Schwarzer, and five of his teammates. The goalkeepers' league, a close one. There's a real bond between all goalkeepers around the world. Craig Forrest knows that only too well. And it's that dreaded shootout you were so concerned about, John. Yeah, and Mark Schwarzer, who would have, if you told Mark two weeks ago or three weeks ago that he'd be in this situation. You're talking to Robbie about the pressure on the goalkeeper. I think uh, the real pressure's on the, the guy taking the kick. The keeper really has nothing to lose. Usually a keeper, if you can make one save out of that five, yep. that's usually uh, a victory. And we're talking Copa America earlier in the semi for quarterfinal and semi-final. Both won by Argentina, or one on penalties. Goy Cachea, who's now world famous for his ability to, to pull off at least one or two saves in the penalty shootout. And it's uh, good to see that Australia are the ones who are taking the first penalty. Paul Wade. And well taken. Sweet penalty. That'll give them a world of confidence. It was 2-1 after extra time. Now it's Australia leading on penalties. Nicely taken. Mitchell. Mitchell against Schwarzer. Mark Schwarzer. This is a chance to redeem himself. And he sends the keeper the wrong way as well. One one on penalties at the moment. Aurelio Vidmar will take the next one. Same spot as Wade almost. Aurelio Vidmar, an experienced campaigner, has been in Europe now for almost three years. Vidmar against Forrest. Vidmar struck it enough to sneak it through. The West Ham striker Bunbury. The 26 year old player who has been a real feature in all of their World Cup qualifiers, Bunbury and Schwarzer, and saved! Saved by Schwarzer! A huge psychological blow! Schwarzer is the hero for the moment! Tobin, the 27-year-old, 
City steps up to take Australia's third. Australia are ahead 2-1 on penalties after two kicks each. Schwarzer. This is smart play by Schwarzer. The 20 year old Marconi goalie just trying to put Sweeney off. That's all he's doing. He wants the ball taken on the spot. That's clever play from a young keeper. Left footer you would think it would go to Schwarzer's left. But he might try to glide it around. And save the game! Schwarzer with two Australia ahead. This will wrap it up for Australia. Farina does it! Australia march on! Australia will be this! Magnificent! But they did it the hard way. Farina buries it. 4-1 on penalties. The day ends for Canada. They were gallant with defeat. Australia dominating the game. They created so many chances and young Mark Schwarzer, he'll be regarded as the hero of this victory. Australia victorious to superb saves by Schwarzer. John. It's a funny game Andy, it's a game uh, that Australia should have won, they had a wrap up in the first half. Hard stopping stuff to go right down to penalties. But I think any uh, neutral observer would uh, agree that Australia deserved to go advanced today. And uh, a funny game, isn't it? Schwarzer perhaps a little bit at fault with the goal that they conceded in normal play, but two great saves in the penalties. And I think there's uh, no doubt Australia deserved to advance. It's now going to be either Colombia or Paraguay, one would think. They really should have wrapped it up earlier. Well, they should have. I mean, uh, we missed so many opportunities. It was their game in the first half, and no one knows that more than the players, but that's the way it goes. Canada came back well in the second half. But to go right down to penalties, I think it's sad to see a match end this way. Thankfully, it's Australia, because uh, overall, here today, they did deserve uh, over the two leagues to advance to the final stage, which will be against the South American opponent come November. We'll just see now... Uh some words before uh, Robbie Zabika has a quick word we'll throw now to Michael Tomolaris with a delighted captain in Graham Arnold. Uh, Graham Arnold, no doubt one of the most gutsiest performances ever by an Australian team. Well, uh, pretty emotional at the moment. Uh, we did well. Uh. Graham, what's going through your mind right now? Well, it sort of makes up for four years ago, you know which was one of the lowest points of my career and uh, it was a great effort. You promised that the team would give their body and soul to win this game and that's exactly what happened. Well, I think we got all the doubters off our back. You know, there was people saying that uh, the European guys didn't have their heart in the emblem of Australia and I think we showed today that, uh, you know, all of us are proud Aussies and uh, I'm proud of all the boys. What happens now? Well... <laughs> I think we're going to have a party tonight and uh, Tuesday we're all back to Europe and uh, waiting for that call for November for South America. Arnie, you're missing out on the celebrations. Go and enjoy. Thank you. We'll be back after this break with Les Murray. He'll talk to Eddie Thompson.
Sydney Football Stadium, absolute pandemonium here as the Australian team celebrates very joyously to the delight of this uh, fantastic crowd of 25,000 or so, which gave them huge support today. And I think Eddie Thompson, the man who should be congratulated, agrees with me. Tomo, first of the support here today, I know it's been a uh, heart-rending uh, experience for you, has been fantastic, hasn't it? The support has been under, I've never heard a noisier uh, crowd at Soccer League, uh, Aussie Rule, I've never heard an atmosphere like this today. And I mean, even when the lads went behind to the Lusa Silly goal after half time, they got behind us the whole way, they're the winners tonight. Okay, now the team, let's, let's go through the match. The team played very well, extremely well in the first half. The ball wouldn't go in the net, what happened there? Nah, we played super stuff. I mean, Vidmar, Zelic, uh, Slater, and Arnold and Farina, they were brilliant and they were getting plenty of support for the Vidmars, but in front of goals, Les, it was one of these days. I mean, you talk about RC goalkeepers, this guy, <laughs> they hit the post, they cleared up the line, and we missed maybe three, four set us the first half there but I mean they still hang in there you know we still do. what about the second half did we go to sleep a little bit uh, when we conceded that goal yeah we did we started to feel a bit sorry for ourselves and we started to knock the, the too many long balls we really had to get in behind them Vidmar and, and Van Blit were the, the answers to get through on the flanks but uh, we started to knock the long one to Frankie over the top and Arnie and it didn't pay off okay now, uh, you've got plenty to work with here, and it's been uh, a tremendous experience morally from these players. You're going to persevere with this uh, squad, I gather, for the, for the next hurdle, which is going to be a very big one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you see the, the work rate of Arnie and Slater and uh, Vidmar Skill and Ned, and these guys, I mean, the overseas guys give us an extra dimension that, uh, I mean, it beats South America, these guys have to be in top form. Okay, just quickly the substitutions, uh, for example, uh, bringing Wadey on so late, give yeah. us the uh, technical strategic reason for that. Well, I mean, Ned Zelich was out and Wadey's a very, very experienced campaigner and uh, I knew he was sitting midfield and win me a lot of balls in the air. Actually, I thought he might even nick me a goal because, I mean, it would be uh, just be the, uh, the comeback for Paul Wade being dropped and coming back on and winning, scoring the winner. OK. Your future opponents are playing, of course, tonight in the World Cup qualifiers. Are you envisaging any trips over there to, uh, to spy on your likely opponents? Yeah, definitely. I'll be going to, uh, I think, it all depends on the results, but probably to Colombia on the 29th and uh, the 6th in Argentina. Uh, probably Marcelo and Raul Blanco will go across and have a look. OK, Eddie, well, congratulations again. You can have the job for about the next 200 years. And, uh, I think <laughs> and I'm we'll going to die tomorrow. So we'll <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. OK, we'll see you and wish you the best in the next game. Thank you very much. Our thanks to Eddie Thompson, the Australian national coach. And Australia will go on to meet one of those South American opponents, probably Colombia, but it could be, of course, Paraguay or even Peru. So we're about to leave you from this fantastic atmosphere at the Sydney Football Stadium. Don't forget, highlights, of course, tonight all around the country at 8.30. Till then, from the Sydney Football Stadium, good night. Okay,